now we will talk about extensions first and then i'll uh, you know come back to uh, how do you use the visual course pages that's the second topic that we will discuss today okay so how many types of controllers did we discuss on uh, salesforce a uh, visual force how many types of controllers does anyone remember yeah two the standard controller and one Anyone remember more than two? We talked about how many types of controllers? Four. Okay, what are those? Standard, then standard list, then custom, and then something extension. I don't remember the full name. standard standard list custom and then extension right so out of those four three we have talked about we have seen standard we have seen standard list we have also seen custom Hello. Hello. Shiva. I think. So we have out of these four controllers, we have seen three of them, and we have uh, you know seen that how they are used, right? So there is a logic, and based on my logic, I pick the type of controller I need. So if I need the standard or predefined logics, go with the standard controller. If I want to use predefined logics for list of records, go with the standard list controller. If I want to define my own logics, custom controller. Now, extension is, as the name suggests, extension. This is something which can be used as an extension to an existing controller. Okay. this can be an extension to an existing controller now what does that mean extension to an existing controller means if i am already using a controller for a page that controller can be standard or custom whatever in addition to whatever methods or functionalities are available with that particular controller which is act acting as the primary controller for the page in case i need a few more functionalities a few additional functionalities then i will use a controller extension make sense so let's say there is a page b1 on that page you are using account standard controller so you will have all the standard functionalities of account standard controller by default that comes in addition to that you feel that you need two methods okay you need all the functionalities of account controller plus two methods right now you cannot create custom controller because if you create a custom controller then you will not be able to use the account standard controller anymore then you will have to use custom, uh, complete custom controller so is there could you repeat repeat your statement uh, ji okay. which statement sorry i completely <laughs> missed it yeah in, in case you guys want me to repeat anything it will be good if you know once i finish and uh, when i ask you guys at that time if you guys you can that will be good right. okay okay sure yeah so let me start again so in case let's take this example again you know, right from the beginning if you have a page called p1 and on that page you have a standard controller called account okay just think about it there's a page there's an account standard controller which means on that page you can use the standard account functionalities yes 
correct correct now if you want two user or two custom defined methods also on that page account standard controller will not uh, allow you to use that right so custom defined right. means for that we should write some class somewhere or you know that program should be written somewhere that can be defined in an extension so for that you just call it create a class define methods and call the class as an extension okay so you'll have to call the class as an extension so you're not going to call the class as a custom controller you're going to call it as an extension so that extension will now allow you to use those methods okay so extension is a class which does not act as a primary controller rather it acts as an add on controller kind of a thing so primary controller can be your standard one or custom controller whatever you are using extension can work as an add on to that right to add some you know additional functionalities to your page correct now let's go and see an example let me go to any of the standard controller page V4, which one? V4, what do we have? We have a standard controller. let's say this v2 this page is a standard controller right and this page uses a standard controller now on this page if i want to have a custom method i want to use a custom method here somewhere then what will i do all that i need to do is i just need to define a class and call that as an extension how will that happen go to setup first Define the class the way you do for custom controller. The same way we have to create a class. Okay, so just go to FX classes, click on new and create a new class. Public class, whatever name you want to put, one. And we have defined a method here. Uh, again, method. String H equals. this has come from extension whatever some message and then I need a get method here public string get h return h where is there a public class spelling is one correct so this is my class that I have defined. All right. Now I need to call this class as an extension. So all that I have to do is just go to the Visual Post page.
okay so that i need to do is just go to the initial code space b2 b2 i will call that class as an extension controller is already there this page is already using in a uh, standard controller i will call that class as a as an extension and i'll put it uh, put v2 here so it's not v2 what is the name of that class e1 so i am calling that class as an extension <coughs> fine so as a result i will be able to use the functionalities provided by this standard controller as well as this class tell me if that part is clear why are we using extension is it clear yes understand that any difficulty understanding this logic pretty simple right so what is happening i am able to use the custom logics along with my standard logics so i am not disturbing the actual controller whatever things have come from there are there plus i have defined a custom method and i am able to call that and that's the reason why i have defined a class and i'm going to call it as an extension that's it okay now there is one more uh, line of code that you have to write if you want to call a class as an extension you have to write a constructor here constructor is also a type of method only it takes pages dot standard controller okay so you have to write a constructor for people who do not understand what a constructor is it's also a type of method right and uh, this method uh, name of this method has to be same as the name of the class itself right in this so all that you have to do is you just have to write this if you are using a standard uh, extension you can you just need to write it this way okay. public name of the class which is the name of the method here and then apex pages dot standard controller okay it will take a parameter con and it will take the standard controller of that page so whichever page you call it in it is going to take that Uh, take the standard controller of that page as a parameter, and it will work with that particular standard controller. You got it? That's it. So you just have to, if you are trying to call a class as a controller, uh, as a, an extension, then you need to write this one line of code extra. That's it. now here you can call your method what was the name of the method that i defined there which method did i define get h so to call it here it should only be h see i am able to call that custom method also here this has come from extension all the other stuff is coming from my standard controller this method so this way you can define whatever methods you want whatever data you want sir so this has become now a combination of standard and custom standard will bring in whatever standard functionalities you are you are getting you will be getting those plus you have the option of bringing in the custom data also data methods whatever you define in the class <coughs> clear not sure okay let let's do one more uh, small example on the same page um see this page functionality if we look into this what exactly this page should do it should show me the details of the account list of the contacts under the at under that account list of opportunities under that account list of cases under that account right let's say or let me you know rather give you a scenario 
um, you know, I was working for this client and they actually wanted, uh, you know, the sales team actually wanted to see the list of campaigns on the account page. List of campaigns they wanted to see on the account page. Okay. Um, I'll tell you the scenario. Uh, basically, you know, there's this company which actually conducts multiple, uh, you know, uh, seminars in different cities. Okay. Uh, they, they, it's a software company and for their uh, software, they actually do multiple seminars. So these seminars are actually conducted and these are like physical events and they invite people to come and attend those events. All right. Their sales team used to call the accounts and they used to invite them for the events. All right. So let's say you know uh, you are going to go into uh, a certain city for an event next month. Okay, let's say Delhi. You are doing an event in Delhi next month, and you start calling all the uh, companies in and around Delhi to come and attend that event. So sales team uh, sales team actually starts doing that. Now the problem that uh, this company faced was when the sales people used to call those uh, companies. Sometimes, you know, the people who were receiving the calls, they used to show interest, but they used to ask more about other events which were happening in and around. Right? Let's say you call someone and that person says that, hey, uh, is it in November? I'm not in Delhi in November. Can you tell me when is the next event in Delhi? Okay, that sort of question they used to get a lot. Or do you have an event going on in Mumbai? I have shifted to Mumbai. That sort of thing. Got it? So, you know, these guys actually thought that it will be good if they can have a quick view of the events or campaigns here in the account record itself, right? So that they don't need to go to the campaign tab and then come back and all that stuff. So while they're on the same account page, if they can have a quick look into the list of events, okay? Events, when I say I basically mean campaigns, I mean, you can store the events in the campaigns. Seminar is a kind of campaign, right? Now the point is that if we are talking about store, uh, putting campaign data into the account from the standard controller logic it cannot come. Why? Because campaign is not related to account in, in, anyhow. There is no relationship. You want to see campaigns and there is no relationship. So from the standard logic it is not coming. So what I have to do? I have to use the custom logic controller extension. So this entire page, let's say, you know, I'll go by this scenario. This entire page is built on standard uh, standard controller logic, right? All these four tabs are from standard controller logic. Let's say I'm required to create one more tab here for campaigns, list of campaigns. But list of campaigns will not come from the standard account logic. For that, I'll have to use my custom logic. That custom logic should be written in this extension. So all that you have to do is Define this list of campaign here. Again, just one minute.
okay let me write it again list of campaign now this is being written in the controller so this is custom logic right select name this sorry name start date and date from campaign public list of campaign get camps just me one quick note all right yeah so this part is okay we are okay on this list of campaign get camps yes. which will return yes. the result of the list of campaigns okay now we go here and we will call it on the visual force page so because that's a list of campaign so let me create one more tab and put a page block table inside that okay tab label can be campaigns text page block table value is camps variable is c fx column value c dot name and start date and date right now under campaigns you will see the list of campaigns all right so these are the campaigns so you can put criteria and you want to bring in the data that you want but now this data is coming from the extension class from your even got it and the page primarily is a standard controller page you see this is standard controller page so i am able to combine the functionalities of standard as well as custom uh, logics Here, let me know if there is any doubt here. If it is, there is any difficulty understanding any part of it. So, Jeet, these objects need not be related. You can still get an object that is that does not have a relation to each other, right? Yep. Because while I am writing a custom logic, there, uh, you know, I can write whatever I want. So, I have written campaign instead of campaign. I could have written anything else, right? so i don't need right. to have any relationship with the actually stand, actual standard controller okay but okay. if you just use a standard controller then you always have to either display data from that object or the related object child objects right the moment custom logic comes into picture then you can display whatever you want acha ji got you so in standard controller you need that relationship like a master detail or something is it between the objects Yes, you have to have now. Otherwise, you cannot do. Right, the related data. list one. Yeah. Okay. So now all the code or all the methods that you used in custom controller, everything is applicable here. 
in the controller extension because it's just a class you know there is no difference between a custom controller and an extension you will create a custom controller if you feel that you for that page you completely want to use the custom controller you don't need a standard or something you will create an extension class in case you want to use a primary controller and you want to use this class just as an extension so that's what you have to find out whether the code that you are writing is going to be the primary controller for the page then that should be a custom controller if the code that you are writing is just going to be used as an add on functionality for the page then use it as an extension all right okay even for your uh, custom controllers we can define these extensions right you can you can define extension for custom controller then this part will change if you are using it with a custom controller then you should be writing public even controller c5 whichever controller you are going to use it with you should need to write that controller controller name that's it for oh, the controller uh, the custom controller which we are extending uh, yes that uh, controller yes so whatever is the controller for the page that controller's name Yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, now I understand. It is just we are mentioning the controller and controller name. That's it. Right. Okay. The controller that you are actually going to use it with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And inside these braces, uh, Jee, uh, mm -hmm. inside this constructor, mm -hmm. uh, do we write any logic or just we leave this open with uh, open braces? so you can you know pass some values inside this but that's again you know a little uh, advanced level concept so i would not want you to get into that you can uh, you know pass in some values inside this that can be done so in one of the examples we will see that also uh, later on okay. but uh, right now i don't want you to do that part. sure okay got it so if it is uh, used for custom controller then you just have to write this line let me write it uh, put it as a comment here so that you guys can refer to that so whatever uh, controller name and it should be written controller name that's it so for standard controller we need to use that apex pages dot standard controller yeah so for standard controller because the controller name is not being defined so it will automatically if you say apex pages dot standard controller it will pick the standard controller from that page automatically okay if it's a count opportunity whatever it is it will automatically pick but for custom controller you will have to define the controller name okay this this page will pull the con, uh, standard controller from uh, from the visual force page that it is related to this class this code yes okay yeah. i was just right. write, writing this part uh, today but i did not understand why did i write i just googled but now i understand it yeah so uh, basically we are defining the location of the actual uh, you know controller which is being used on the page here right so this will automatically pick and this you have to define as controller c5 or c4 whichever controller you are using all right okay so now let's move on to the next part of the discussion for today which was how to access Visual Force pages. So so far we have talked about so many Visual Force pages, but we have always been you know going and typing it in the uh, URL name of the page, and that's how we access the Visual Force page. But practically that should not be the way of accessing the page, right? The end users will not know the name of the page, and they will not type it in the chat window, and uh, sorry, they will not type it in the URL and uh, access the page, right? So for that we have to Uh, you know, do some settings so that they can automatically use it. So first option is creating a tab for Visual Force page. Okay, the first that you can do is you can create a tab for your Visual Force page. 
creating tag for the payment force page is very very simple all that you have to do is go to setup create tabs go to setup create tabs and under tabs you will have the option of adding visual force tabs hmm? click on that new visual force tab which visual force page you want to create the tab for let's say v15 call it search ui whatever label and name you want to give click a tab style save it Now you click on search UI. See, it will automatically take you to the V50. Got it? The tab got created. So this is one way of uh, for you know to make the visual force pages accessible to the end users. You can create tab. The second is override the standard salesforce.com page hello Shiva? Uh, yes, Asha. Uh, yes, Shiva, you live in Florida, right? Yes, yes. Shiva, do you know any, uh, how is this place called Sunrise? Do you know, do you have any idea? Which one? Sunrise, it's close to Miami? No, no idea. Okay, where do you stay? I stay in uh, Orlando. Orlando. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank First method we have seen, which is basically by uh, creating a tab. The second one is overriding a standard salesforce.com page. So there are standard salesforce.com pages for everything. When you click on a record, there's a standard page open. When you click on a tab, there's a standard page open. Right? Salesforce by default has standard page for everything. Now, if I am not happy with the stand look and feel of the standard page, then I can create my visual force page and override that standard page using this visual force page. Right? Masking kind of a thing. So instead of that standard page, you can use your visual force page. So where do you do that? You can just go to setup and then select the object for which you want to do the you know, override. Let's say you want to override a standard page of account. So go to accounts. And then under accounts, you will find all these standard pages listed in button, links, and actions. Buttons, links, and actions. Okay. If you click on this, this is where you will find all your standard pages listed. Okay. There's a standard new page, edit page, delete page, view page, tab, account tab. For everything, there's a page, right? And these are all standard salesforce.com pages. Let's say the view page, the detail page that we see. I want to override that using my visual force page. So I can just click on edit. Right now it's no override. You select a visual force page here. And my computer is behaving so funny today. Right. Yeah. So we will select the visual force page and from the drop down you have to select which visual force page you want to overwrite. Then what will happen instead of that standard salesforce.com page, when someone clicks on a link, the data will open in the visual force page format.
one minute. Yeah. V2, okay. Save it. Interesting. We can edit standard pages also. Yeah, so it's not basically editing editing standard pages from page layout. It is overriding the standard page. So I'm not doing anything on the standard page. I'm just replacing the standard page with the visual force page. Now if someone goes and opens an account, let's say you try to open Burlington Textile. Let's say we do the show first page. Okay, this is opportunity. Sorry, go to the account. See. The account record that you open that gets opened in the visual force page format. So now there is no need to supply the ID and all that stuff. You know that that's something that you guys must be wondering for all these days. That are we going to supply the IDs manually? No. You can just override it with a standard page. And now if you want to see any particular account, Dickinson, okay, just click on this. See the record will open in that format that you have defined. Here, so that's the second way. You can override sales uh, standard salesforce.com page with a visual force page. Now, the next is. Uh, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please go. Ahead. Uh, when we override it, we can still see the code, right? At the bottom, is there a way where they don't? I mean, uh, you can see the code because. No, you can see the code because the development mode is enabled for you, right? Your okay. actual end user will not have development mode enabled, so he will not see that code. Got it? So okay, for people who okay. have the development mode yeah. enabled, they will get to see this editor. But your sales team definitely they will not have this enabled, so they will not get to see the code. Okay, cool. Thanks. Fine. And uh, one more thing, you know, just for your understanding, sometimes it may happen that you're working on a project and you see a page, you click on a record, you see a page and then you are not able to figure out whether that's a visual force page or a standard page. Okay, definitely, you know, once you actually get into the button links and actions and find it out, you will be able to figure it out from there. But the moment you look onto the page, how do you figure out at one glance that whether there's a visual force or the Salesforce standard page? It's very simple. If you see in the URL, you will get to see this. For a standard page, you will not have this visual force page name and all that stuff. Okay. So for a standard page, you will just have the ID right after this. Got it? That's one. Second is if it's a visual force page, you will get to see this SFDC dot override equals one. And also you will be able to see the visual force page name. So you can understand which page is actually being used here. Right. Sometimes it, it becomes very important for you. You've got a customer who is actually telling you that, hey, you know what, this page is giving this trouble and all that stuff. So you need to figure out whether that's a standard page or a custom page. Right. So in the looking into the URL, you can clearly see that, okay, this is a visual force page. Which page? This is V2. Now straight away go to the code of the V2 and start making modifications. Whatever. Got it? So you don't have to go to button links and actions to find it out. You can find it out from here only. Okay. The next way of accessing the visual force is through page reference buttons. So we have seen the page reference and we have seen that. In the page reference, we can define return page dot that something. And that can take me to a certain visual force page. So sometimes you can have one button created on a visual force page which can take you to the other page okay number four is embed a visual force page into a standard page
Okay. The next that we have is embed a visual post page into a standard page. The second option that we did, we did overwrite the standard page, completely remove the standard page and bring in the visual post page there, right? But sometimes, you know, the customer may say that, no, I don't want to remove that entire stuff. I just want to embed the visual post page inside the standard page. Okay, so I want to see the complete standard page with the visual post page embedded into it. To do that, again, let me take the same example for account. First of all, let me remove the button links and actions. This overriding I'll have to remove so that it gives me the standard page back. So all that you have to do is just make it no override again and it resets it back to the standard salesforce.com page. Got it? So that part is done. Now I want to embed my visual force page into the standard account page. So in this case you need to go to the page layout. Click on edit. And in page layout you will see at the last there is this option of visual force pages. You can embed the visual force page into your standard page. So to embed it, let me create a section. Here, section one column. Enter in this. Okay, now visual force page has got embedded into the standard page layout. Click on save. Now if you open a stand, uh, you know, account page, you will see that there is a visual force section which is embedded into it. See this? This section got embedded through the visual force page. This is a visual force page, right? So if you have requirement like that, you can do that as well. Correct. Do sales sales projects really have requirements of this kind, the chief? I mean, uh, uh, generally editing the standard pages and uh, having uh, uh, visual force pages embedded into the standard pages. Yeah, you can have. And, yeah, I mean, are uh, uh, will there be really use cases of this kind? I mean, depends. Um, I mean, all these options which are there, uh, they can be required. And embedding is not a very frequently used option, but yeah, it can be required. You know. Sometimes a client may say that, okay, fine, I want all the functionality of standard page. I'm pretty much okay with the standard page functionality. But I just want to, you know, quickly have a look into okay. uh, some some part of uh, visual force page, right? Or even, you know, the client will not tell you to embed the page. That, that's something that you yourself will understand. That, okay, it's a good idea to embed the visual force page here or something like that. Okay. Fine. Embedding is definitely a, you know, rare requirement, but there's an option and you can use it. Okay. Okay. So embed a visual force page. Now let's say, you know, uh, so we have seen two requirements. Using a complete, sorry, yeah. we have seen uh, two requirements. Overriding the complete standard page with a visual force page. And then we have also seen embedding a visual force page into a standard page. Correct? That's there. Now there is one more option which is basically you know about creating a custom button. Okay. 
that custom button thing is basically creating a custom button for our visual force space so that requirement uh, you know is applicable in case you are uh, when you want to create a custom button for the end user you should be able to click on that custom button and then get into the visual force page fine so i think uh, what we'll do we'll uh, discuss about the custom button in our next session because it will take you know five ten minutes for me to explain that so let's you know talk about that in our next session um, are we clear and okay with what we have discussed so far all these four methods creating tab or visual post page overriding the standard page page reference button that's you know pretty simple that we have already discussed embedding a visual post page into a standard page easy out correct yeah.